Hello everyone and welcome to another Tree Frog Flag production. This is Trevor Park and you might recognize my voice from a lot of the narration on our videos. And standing next to me here is Paul Nolan and he and I work together to produce the content that comes to you on Tree Frog Flag Productions. So now you know who we are. Today we're doing something a little bit different. We're going to do a video on models. And what's in front of you here are two Athern Genesis Black Widow GP9s. And what we're going to show you today is a little decoder comparison between the 5671, which has a Tsunami decoder in it that's stock from Athern, and the 5634, which has a TCS WOW diesel sound decoder in it. And we're going to show you a little bit of how to speed match those because there's a lot of confusion around how to speed match WOW sound decoders with Tsunami decoders and other manufacturers of decoders. So I'll just say something brief about the 5671 and then I'll let Paul talk about the 5634, which is a little more interesting. The 5671 is um, almost identical to the 5634 in looks. Main difference is what's under the hood. Uh, it has a TSU AT1000 Tsunami sound decoder with 567 prime mover sounds. And um, other than that, it's uh, basically stock from Athern. So I'll let Paul talk about the 5634. Yeah, the uh, 5634 has a TCS WOW sound decoder installed in it. And it's programmed to 567 EMD. It's set with a P3 and there's been minor programming done to it. But we're still in the process of, uh, you know, it's in the prototype phase of programming currently. Um, it's also had major LED work done to it. It's had eight new um, fiber optic LED lenses added to it. And that was uh, what Trevor did. So maybe you want to elaborate on that a little bit. Yeah, well, I had the locomotive uh, over at my layout, which is where we're filming right now. Um, I had it over here for about two or two months or so. And in that time, I decided that while the decoder was being programmed and I was working on some of the electronics, that I might as well do the lights. So um, what it has in it is four 3mm LEDs, so uh, one for the headlight, one for the backup light, one for the front Mars light, and one for the rear Mars light. And uh, connected to that are fiber optic strands which run into the light housings and light up where the bulbs used to be. If you can see on the 5671, it still has its original bulbs, and there is a major difference in brightness and look yeah. between the uh, 71 and the 34. LEDs are much better. Most def improvement. Yeah, definitely. If you're going to take the time to install a hardwire decoder, you might as well install LEDs if you have the room. Or maybe if you don't have room, do surface mount, because they're a massive improvement, and they take less power too. So you can run you know, more locomotives on your layout. Yeah. In the case that, you know. Well, and the bigger thing is that they don't burn out. Yeah. At least not as quickly. That's so, definitely for um, sure. You'll have to take your locomotive apart out quite less. Quite a few headlights. Yeah. yeah. And generally, if you handle your locomotive less, it will look better in the future because you won't be screwing with the details. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, back to what we're actually uh, doing in this video. Um, there's been some confusion around how to speed match WOW sound decoders with Tsunami decoders. So we thought today we'd take two locomotives with different decoders and try to speed match them and see what we can do. So let's get started. The 5634 is stock, so it has had no programming done to it in the motor control sector. It has had sound programming done to it, but nothing in the motor control. The 5671 is set up um, to my speed matching standards for the rest of my locomotives and has had both motor control and sound programming done to it. Um, the main thing to understand uh, that's the difference between the two and how they work is the TCS WOW sound uses a mode called prototype mode which allows you to have very large acceleration and deceleration rates and um, makes it so you have to push F7 to break the locomotive. Um, F7 as in function 7 to break the locomotive. Um, so let's take a look at how they run together. So as you can see, the 5634 is going a little bit fast for 5671 though. So we're going to try to speed match them now using the JMRI uh, model railroad interface software. 
to program it. So the first thing you need to do to program your locomotive is open up Decoder Pro. This program is made by JMRI, which stands for Java Model Railroad Interface. And this allows you to use your computer to program the locomotives. Um, the only thing you need that you need to pay for uh, is the actual apparatus to interface your computer with the layout. A good um, product is the Digitrax PR3, which allows you to interface your computer via USB to the PR3 and then via the PR3 to the command station through the LocoNet. So that works really well. It's worked really well for me for programming the locomotives, and I really like it. So I'd, I'd highly recommend that. So now, to program your locomotive, the first thing you need to do is go to New Loco in the upper left-hand corner. And then it'll give you a bunch of options of different decoders. And you're going to want to scroll down. It's already scrolled down by default, because that's what I was programming earlier, to train control systems for the TCS WOW sound decoder. And now you're going to go down to WOW Diesel Set EMD, Set 1 here, because the locomotive that we have is uh, EMD 567, so that's in Set 1. Uh, depending on what decoder you have, uh, whether you have Sound Set 2 for the diesels or whether you have the steam sound, that might vary. So we're going to click on that. And then we're going to go to WOW 101 here, because that is the decoder we ordered for the locomotive. So you're going to click on that, and then it's going to give you an address of long byte address, so uh, more than four digits, or short address. That doesn't matter, you don't need to click on it because it will open up anyway. So, now, before you start programming, I highly recommend entering your locomotive into the roster. What this does is it allows you to save all your preferences to the locomotive so you don't have to go back and read them before you program. So, let's just call this locomotive SP for Southern Pacific 5634. And the road name and road number stuff you really don't have to do. You just have to, I'm going to change this to Trevor Park because that's my name. And uh, the DCC address and all, we'll change that once we get into the program. So we'll save that to the roster. And now it's saved to the roster. So you go to basic, make sure before you program that you enter the correct address of the locomotive so you're not programming to a random address on the main line. And we'll go to 5634 and write that. Now we want to go to speed table. And this will allow you to set the different values on the speed table for the locomotive. Now before you do any of this, I should mention that you need to go into audio assist on the TCS WOW sound decoders. Audio assist is their system for minor programming for like horns and stuff like that. But you can also do motor control programming on it. I mentioned earlier in the video that there was a um, mode called prototype mode. And prototype mode gave you the big deacceleration and acceleration rates. So what you need to do is go into the audio assist into the motor control section. You get to audio assist by on mainline mode pushing F8 four times. And then audio assist will guide you how to get to that mode through motor control options and that sort of thing. And you need to set it to what they call slot car mode, which is just when you turn the uh, speed dial up, it goes, and when you turn the speed dial down, it stops. And that will let, let you run it with a lot of other locomotives, because in prototype mode, it just has too big of deacceleration and acceleration rates to run with any decoder from Tsunami or Loke Sound or even a non-sound decoder like a Digitrax or an NCE or something like that. It just won't work, so you need to set it to slot car mode first before you do any of this. Now we know it's going too fast, but before we start the, uh, setting the speed table, you need to click on Use Speed Table in the center of the screen there. Now we can start adjusting the values in the speed table. Now you have to actually look at your locomotive and see how it's running compared to your base locomotive. I recommend having a base locomotive to work off of so you program everything's speed to that locomotive. Make sure it's a locomotive you really like the way it runs. So now I noticed that it starts up a little bit slower than the other engines, so we might want to up the starting voltage a tiny bit like that. And so, but then once it climbs up, we, I notice that it starts to get too fast. So up here, we're going to want to take these values down. And so you you just need to know your controller mostly and know where your engine is on the controller uh, relative to the speed steps. So then you have a better idea of how to adjust the speed table. And this will take a little bit of practice. So go through and just adjust everything down a little bit. 
doesn't take a lot because a, a little bit makes a big difference. So just go down and adjust them. And if you accidentally take one too far, you can scroll back up, obviously, and take it back down like that. And now the reason we're programming on the main, we're programming in OPS mode. We're programming to the main. So we can just easily push the right button down here where I have my cursor, write all the values to the locomotive, and then start pro and then start up the locomotive and not have to take it on off the programming track. And then we can just run it with the other locomotive and test how it, how it runs. And then we, if it's not running correctly still, we can go back and just adjust the values accordingly. So this works really well. Now once you write the values, the locomotive will jerk a little bit to show that it's been programmed. Now you can run the locomotives together again and test. Again, as I said, this may take a little bit of time to get the values right, but once you do, you'll really like the results. So now I'm going to go back, make sure all the values are set right, and make sure all the settings I want are programmed for the speed, and we're going to go take a look at it again. So let's go back to the layout and take a look. Now that we've adjusted the values on the speed table, let's take a look at how the locomotives run together. The thing to remember is that you may have to go back multiple times and adjust uh, different values on the speed table because, as I did, I didn't get it right on the first time. I had to go back multiple times and check and run the engine through different speed steps and make sure that the two were sunk pretty well. And also remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. The uh, main thing you're looking for is just to make sure that the engines aren't pushing and pulling on each other too much so you reduce wear on the wheels and that sort of thing. So let's take a look at how they run together. Well, I'd say those are speed matched pretty well. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect, as I said, but what we're looking for is something remotely close to them running at the same speed so they aren't pushing and pulling on each other, and that's pretty close to what we're looking for. So now the locomotives are speed matched, and I'd like to turn it over to Paul so he can tell us a little bit about what it took to get to this point. We had to go uh, multiple times through Decoder Pro and program through the Ops mode so we could uh, program in the main line. And uh, that allows us to run the locomotives, change some variables, and then run them immediately afterwards so we don't have to jump back and forth from taking them off the programming track. We just have them ready to run and they're fine. Um, but it took us multiple times to do that, and it's a lot of trial and error, and it takes a lot of patience to go through it, but the end result is um, definitely well worth it. Yeah, so I'd say if you're willing to put in the time to program the decoder so it'll run with your other engines, that's assuming that you own Tsunamis or Loke Sounds or QSIs or other decoders like that. Um, if you're willing to put in the time to program the WOW sound, I think it's well worth it. But, uh, Paul, you're the owner of it, so why don't you uh, uh, give us your opinion on what you think about it. I, I went into this kind of blind um, because I just wanted to try something else, and I got kind of sick of Tsunami Sound because we have so many units and not all 567 is exactly the same. You know, the mufflers on a GP9 might be different than an F7s, and they reverberate differently, so I figured it might be kind of nice to get a different sound set in there. And um, I, we installed it and went through it, and it it was it ran, runs fine on its own. But um, originally, when we tried speed matching, it wasn't that great, as shown before in the video. And um, it, it's you really have to put a lot of work into it if you want to get it to run correctly. Um, but the end result is pretty nice from what you can see in this video. The they sound really nice. It's good to have variety, like I said before. Um, the horns are good, the bells are nice, um, and uh, yeah, I mean, if, if that's what you're going for, I couldn't see you going wrong with the wow sound, um, but I still prefer maybe loke sound um, to wow sound. Yeah, and I will say also, just uh, for viewer information, uh, wow sound does have their own proprietary 
um, speed matching that you can do through their audio assist where you just use the function buttons on the uh, controller to program yeah, it. They have their own um, speed matching, but it doesn't work. It, and it's not I, that great. I would not recommend using it. Use the speed table. That will get you to speed match with the other locomotives. Personally, I just kind of think the whole voice thing is more of an extra bonus feature that's in there for kind of a product placement, but it doesn't really add anything. Um, I'd rather use Decoder Pro or manual programming through the throttle, the buttons. It's uh, kind of fun to change the horns and the fly and stuff, but um, really for major programming, it's not necessary. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. Well, we hope this video has helped you uh, learn how to program your Wow Sound decoders so you can speed match them with any other decoder that uh, uses slot car mode. And um, we hope to do more of these videos in the future. So if you like this video, comment and subscribe to Tree Frog Flag Productions. So now we'll end the video with a run by of these two pulling a freight train. And thanks for watching.